Hey there, Postal here. So today we're taking out a plane that I just got. This is my fourth battle in it. Uh, or maybe it's my fifth battle in it, actually, because I think I had a system issue on the third battle. No, that was second battle. I don't know. I haven't had a lot of battles in it. Um, and so my point of all of that is I wanted to kind of um, show off my first impressions of this plane. So what is the Yak 3RD? Uh, well, it is part Yak. However... It's really underpowered, even for a Yak. Yaks are not known for their firepower in the first place. Yak-3, I believe, has 23mm hub cannon and two 20mm cannons, um, which is actually, you know, not too bad. This particular plane has a single 23mm cannon. That's it. Um, it's got relatively good range got okay damage per second uh, however it's still only one freaking cannon and you're gonna notice a lot of the times when I'm shooting at stuff um, you know it's gonna be situations like this where holy cow do I have like everybody and their brother on me here where I wish I had just a little bit more firepower to do anything um, okay, so this is a weaker Yak-3. That sounds awesome. What a great premium plane. Uh, well, there's more to it than that. You may have noticed I've got this uh, bubble of rocket fire out the back here. So this plane gives up its reasonable gunfire. You know, gets this ridiculously weak gunfire. Um... And what does it do with that? Well, it gets this great burst speed. Um, can't argue with the ability to burst as fast as this plane can. Hello, planes. Does it make up for the lack of firepower? Um, you know what? I'll have to fly the Yak-3 and find out. It's been a long time, a very long time since I've flown the Yak-3. Haven't owned it in years. Much less flown it. Now let's get a little bit closer here. Let's see if I can't boost up to this guy. Got my engine cooling going on here. My BVP 210 is incredibly fast plane, especially for a multi roll. Uh, it's a tier ahead of me as well. can see the frustration this particular gun happens to have against fighters it's actually okay yeah it still takes a long time I'm not gonna lie it can be frustrating but versus actual fighters it's not necessarily the end of the world kind of thing and you might be able to hear me just kind of click click clicking um, so that way I'm not overheating my poultry gun don't know if this guy even knew I was here. Uh, totally, like, God forbid I overheat the one gun I do have. So I am, I'm not just holding down the trigger. Should be able to see visually, but just in case you can't, uh, that I am letting go every second or so. I'm definitely not going after bombers and ground attackers. The only time I'm going after heavy fighters, GAs, or bombers... Um, is when they're on super low health. Then I'll go after him. Sure, why not? But like, like the TU2, I could see me going after him. Um, ooh, let's go over here. Who's this heavy fighter? XP58. This does not sound like fun playing to go after. To be honest, he's got a rear gunner. Um, wow. Well, speaking of not fun planes to deal with. What in the world is going on with my life? Let's see if I can't knock this guy out. I can. Ah, fliggity flack, man. All right, so where are the multi rolls over here? They're actually up very high, annoyingly. Um, and there's a fighter inbound, annoyingly. 
So I'm actually going to deal with the fighter first. I don't want to go to high altitude if I don't have to. Um, simply because the flax is going to tear me up. I am a light fighter after all. Here we go. Dive back down. Stop it. Yeah, those multi rolls are still chasing after our friendly bomber, I think. So hopefully we've cleared the area enough for our ground attackers to do ground attacker kind of things. We're actually going to head on over here. Let's use our boost. And that's what I tend to use this plane for. One of the most frustrating things about the Yaks is their inability to flex to a new sector uh, in a timely manner. And so being able to use your crazy boost on this plane to get to a sector that you feel you can be impactful at is really quite nice. All right, so are we going to be able to get some wrench? Uh, whoopsie. PvP 210, we need to get this Batwing knocked out. I can clearly outmaneuver him. As you can typically say against anything when you're in the Act 3, about the only thing you can outmaneuver might be like an A7M. And even that's, you know, flip a coin kind of situation. There we go, got ourselves a Nakamatsu. Um, I think I'm going to go defend the mining facility over here. Um, our B-29 is doing B-29 things, allowing for us to just be flexible. <clears throat> See if I can't knock out this I-220. There's another multi-roll inbound. You've got to pay attention to what's going on around you when you're in a plane like this. You should be doing that anyway, but just a friendly reminder. Um, if you're in a plane that relies on its maneuverability over its airspeed, and yeah, this has great boost, but it's still relying on its maneuverability, you've got to focus on the map, because it's not like you can get away, right? Um, so yeah, 12,825 personal points. Uh, got some stuff. Let's head back. All right, so nothing over the top crazy here, but um, I think it, this showcased what the plane can do. Um, we captured three sectors, which isn't necessarily this plane's forte, but having that boost, being able to get from sector to sector, so helpful, right? 12 aerial targets destroyed, 460 capture points. The key to this plane, um, as with so many different planes, but, but specifically this plane is focusing on what you can take down. Don't waste your energy on a full health heavy plane unless it's the only plane near you and it's relevant. Do not focus on a full health ground attacker or a full health bomber in any kind of real situation just because um, you're going to die to its rear gunner and you're going to take 50 minutes to kill it, right? Go for the low health targets if they are um, heavy fighters, ground attackers, and bombers. Otherwise, your focus should be on other fighters and multi-role fighters. You are, uh, you've got crazy turnability, right? Crazy, crazy turnability. Um, and so focus on that maneuverability. I've got mine down to eight seconds, and this isn't specialized. And like, yeah, it's just, it's not, it's not fully specced out at all. Um, what I really like about this plane, and I do like this plane, like I said, I've flown it maybe maybe five times. I like that the boost allows you to get to the next sector, basically. Whether that's getting to that sector to defend it or getting to that sector to attack it. That's the biggest issue with the Yaks, is they take forever to get from sector to sector. Heck, they get take forever to get from one side of their own sector to the other side of that same sector. The Yaks are just incredibly... inflexible in that regard as maneuverable as they are um you know they give up a lot for that maneuverability as do the zeros but that's a different story so the yak 3rd i'm quite enjoying it is it 
A strong plane? Uh, no. However, its its strength really relies on the pilot paying attention to what's going on around them. If the pilot knows where the, they need to go, what sector is the most, uh, where they can be the most impactful, it's not necessarily going to be the sector that, um, you know, where everybody's at. It could be a sector where you know you need to hang on to it or you know you need to f capture it. Um, it's nice to have that boost ability and be able to get over there as you want to. The other great thing about the Yak 3 RD is it is a premium plane. So I've got my LA 15 pilot in here. Um, and so this adds you a little bit more maneuverability. And heck, I even have aerodynamics experts. So it's going to be adding to the equipment that's providing maneuverability and speed as well. I've also got Marksman 2 on this particular pilot. Um, so my meager 23 millimeter cannon is actually able to hit the target and do some damage with a little bit more consistency. The strength of this cannon, if there is a strength, is its range. Um, it's not super long range, but it's not short range either. You do have a nice, solid mid-range cannon here. Take advantage of that. As far as my initial setup is concerned, I, I figure you've got enough maneuverability. I didn't want to go full maneuverability with my equipment setup. I put lightweight wing frame for that extra little bit of maneuverability. So if I do get into a, a fight with an A7M or a Ki-84 or a Yak-3 or a specialized Spitfire 9, something like that, I've, I've got a leg up on them. I do have improved uprated engine on here as well, uh, just to help my overall speed and its impact. Um, as far as equipment is concerned, there's only two items that you can choose at tier seven and cockpit armor would be a waste of time on a Yak 3RD. So go for the site. It's pretty straightforward there. The consumables now. So there is some, there's some flexibility here for sure. I use the first aid package. I recommend using the first aid package. This plane does, like most Yaks, has the propensity to get set on fire. Um, I don't think I got set on fire in this particular battle. I'm almost positive I didn't, mainly because I was able to avoid taking the hits. But the plane does catch on fire, uh, I think, uh, pretty easily, just like all the other Yaks. So you might be thinking to yourself, okay, get a fire extinguisher. Well, in reality, I should have a pilot on here that already has a firefighter skill, so I should probably have my Yak-19 pilot on here. My Yak-19 pilot has the firefighter skill. That skill, if you are actively maneuvering, will put out your fire. You're in a Yak, you're gonna be actively maneuvering 90% of the time, and if you're not, it's very easy to start maneuvering. It'll put the fire out, and then you don't need a fire extinguisher. You can use the first aid package. God forbid you get your pilot knocked out and you have one cannon that can't shoot the inside of a barn. Uh, you know, so you you need um, you need your accuracy with when you've got just one cannon like this. So first aid package is the way to go, in my humble opinion. Um, I do get the tail under uh, the wings, not the tail, but the wings get do get knocked out quite a bit in this plane. I still have pneumatic control assist on the plane, uh, simply because if there's a time that I do need to outturn something. I want to make sure I can do that. And you can use pneumatic control assist to counter the broken wing. It doesn't fully counter a broken wing, but it counters it enough. And considering your maneuverability under normal circumstances, using pneumatic control assist will actually keep you maneuverable enough with a broken wing. Once I specialize the plane, I'm almost certainly going to be putting on here um, the emergency control system to get my wings back in. Um, the exhaust bleed um, system, which helps reduce fire damage or just fire chances in general, I don't think it's really a good option. Again, I'm going to make sure that my pilot has a firefighter skill and I'm going to have my anti-fire set up based around my pilot and that way I can be more effective with my consumables as far as my airframe is concerned. I do have the engine cooling on here. I do get the engine knocked out from time to time. But I just find the engine cooling to be so viable when I am when I'm desperate need of trying to get to a sector or get away from a, a plane or get to a plane, get high altitude. I don't know. Engine cooling has so much flexibility. Um, even with my engine getting knocked out relatively often, I still find the engine cooling to be the better option in this regard. And universal ammo because I guess why not? I've got the credits for it. Um, as far as the airframe is concerned, 
once I do specialize it, I really am not 100% sure what my next option will be. I might go with polished skin. I'm going to fool around with it and see. Go with polished skin, give me aircraft speed, which takes away from my maneuverability, so I might change my upgraded engine to the lightweight power unit at that point. I'm going to try to find the right balance on my metrics. I do like where it's at. I feel like I'm at a pretty sweet spot. Uh, now that I changed to my Yak-19 pilot, it's 8.1 on the turn time rather than 8.0. Uh, still pretty darn viable, I would say. Um, so we'll see what, what I do once I specialize. It shouldn't take too long because this plane just racks up the kills um, as long as you're aiming for those light targets, light aircraft, multi-role fighters, and then otherwise from that point going forward, it should be um, targets of opportunity. So I do like this plane. I don't play turn fighters all that often anymore. Um, but it does take me back to when I first started playing World of Warplanes and how I was playing things like Spitfires and Yaks um, and really enjoying my turn fighter time. Just, again, if you win this plane or if you've bought this plane, keep in mind the, the cannon is just... The cannon is going to determine what you go after more often than not because you'll kill, you will literally kill yourself trying to kill a ground attacker or a bomber because you're, you're A, you're not going to kill it quick enough you're going to open up yourself to counterattack from enemy aircraft, or you're going to get melted down by the, the turrets of those planes. So you really need to be focused on what is the best aircraft to attack, where can you be most viable. And I hope you enjoyed this first impression of a plane that I just won in a crate uh, this last Saturday night uh, while I was live streaming. It's a pretty good, uh, pretty good plane to get, and to be honest, it's not overpowered by any means, but a lot of fun. I'd love to hear if you've got this plane. What's your setup on the plane? Do you agree with my, my quick assessment? Um, do you have a different or um, contradicting point of view on the plane? I'd love to hear it. Uh, feel free to comment down below. You guys know I always respond. Or uh, hop in my Discord. That uh, link is in the description. Hope you have a great day. Bye.